Copyright applies to the following verbal and written content. With the exception of the content owner, complete content excerpts and links may be used for nonprofit purposes only, provided that full and clear credit is given to the following names wherein Diary Single Woman, Diary of a Single Woman, and Miss Anonymous. Appropriate and specific direction to the original content must be used. All rights are reserved. Hi, I'm Miss Anonymous with Diary of a Single Woman. I hope that you have been enjoying my true erotic stories from my diary. Yes, I do have a lot more true stories to share with you. But in the meantime, I have a proposition for you. Yes, a proposition. I want you to take a journey with me. Take a journey into a mysterious, taboo, and intriguing world of sensual fiction. A world that offers a place for you to escape from your normal daily life. A world that expands your mind beyond boundaries. Beyond boundaries you never knew you had. A world where you discover intimate thoughts and feelings you thought you were incapable of. A place where you can indulge in nail-biting stories. Oh yeah, this is going to be so damn good. I'm writing this lustful, adventurous novel just for you. I've named this series as a tribute to the breathtaking trilogy that had us all glued to our books and movie screens. Well, fasten your seatbelts, or should I say, unfasten your seatbelts, and get ready to live life on the edge. Welcome to Fifty Shades of Red. Chapter 6, Part 1 Madame Vivian was tucked away quietly behind the partition. I was sitting down in the burgundy leather reclining chair, but I hadn't reclined it yet. The leather was softly cushioned. I felt swallowed in the depths of the chair. I felt like the chair was hugging me in a nurturing way. I couldn't hear any other sound with the exception of my deep, shallow breathing. Madame Vivian was right. The soundproof room kept the noises of the event festivities outside. I was more concerned with me letting out an unexpected scream, as I'm not sure if I will be able to hold in my sounds while allowing this to happen to me. Ethan was in front of me on the floor, on his knees, with his head at my chest level. He purposely held the lubricated condom-covered cucumber out of my eyesight as he continued to talk with me in a calm, soothing voice. I want you to relax. I'm here to please you, not hurt you. I know you and I have never been intimate before. For now, I just want you to close your eyes and imagine me entering you for the very first time. I want you to imagine what I would feel like sliding inside of you. I want you so badly, Kiva. I've wanted you since day one. Close your eyes. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. You can trust me. 
I closed my eyes and allowed my back to sink deeper into the leather chair. I felt Ethan's hand gently glide up my inner thigh. He carefully started pushing my inner thighs further away from each other. Pull the bottom of your dress up. With my eyes closed, I brought my hands to the bottom edge of my dress and slid the bottom up just above my waist. Ethan brushed the back of his hand against the front of my panties the back of his hand brushing over my clitoris. I enjoyed the way he made me feel. My hips began to loosen as I became comfortably aroused. I want you to imagine us in a place where you feel comfortable, where there is no one but us alone. Oh, How I want to make love to you and feel your paradise convulse around my steel. I want to make love to you just the way you like it. Ethan used his two fingers to slide the front of my panties off to the side. I could feel the room temperature surround my opening. Ethan glided his middle finger just past the opening of my paradise. That's it, baby. Get wet for me. I'm ready to please you. I'm ready to make love to you. I felt the tip of the lubricated cucumber circle around my clitoris, then circle around my opening. Oh no, I can't believe I'm going to get fucked by a cucumber. What in the hell am I doing? Who in the hell am I? This isn't me. My hip and thigh muscles begin to tighten as I try to close my thighs. The thought of fucking a cucumber was too much to handle. Baby, I'm right here. I'm not going to hurt you. I want you to know how I plan to make love to you. Let me in. Let me please you. Ethan said convincingly. My thighs began separating again. Ethan's finger slid back inside of me and then back out. Next. I felt the lubricated cucumber start to pierce my paradise opening. It felt hard as fuck. Ethan began inching it in, then inching it out, inch in, inch out. After each repetition, he would inch the cucumber in just a little further. I started to tell that there was no more available space inside my paradise. The cucumber took up every inch I had. That's it, baby. Take it. Take me. You are pleasing me so well. I love to see you like this, Ethan whispered. Ouch! Ow! It's starting to hurt. It's too hard. The cucumber is too hard. Well, you had better get used to hard. When you feel me inside of you, I'm much harder than this. Ethan allowed the cucumber to only go so far, but his in and out thrust became faster. As he sped up the thrust, I opened my eyes. He was staring at my face, watching my every reaction. I started to frown and bite my lip as I felt the hard cucumber quickly go in and out of me. My thigh muscles started to tighten, causing my paradise walls to also tighten around the cucumber. 
the hard cucumber rubbing my inner paradise walls without mercy. I placed my hand over the hand that Ethan was using to fuck me with the cucumber in an effort to slow down his thrust. Ethan forcefully moves my hand out of the way. I'm not done with you yet, Ethan said with a serious gaze on his face. I want to see you come all over this cucumber. I want your creamy cum as my salad dressing. We're not done until I see your cum run down the sides and drip into the palm of my hand. Ethan started fucking me harder with the cucumber. He had this deeply serious look on his face as if he was obsessed with the moment. Ouch, fuck, you're hurting me, I said. Ethan ignored my words as he made the cucumber fuck me harder. What in the hell were those words again? Stop, stop garden, stop activity. I bellowed. Madam Vivian walks out from the partition. This activity has ended, Mr. Bowman and Miss Jamerson. Congratulations on completing the first of eight rounds of give control, take control. Granted that you will be purchasing the game tonight. You will be purchasing the game, right? Yes, Ethan said. No, I said after Ethan's reply. But I thought you wanted us to go on the all-expense-paid seven-day retreat, Ethan questioned. You know what? I really don't care right now. Just buy the damn game and get me the hell out of here, I said angrily. Wonderful. I will package up your game. You both will find the mobile app code and instructions inside. Mr. Bowman, if you have your phone on you, now is the time to take a selfie of yourself, Miss Jamerson, and the main feature, in this case, the cucumber. Remember to upload the picture to the app and each one of you will log how you feel about round one, Madam Vivian instructed. As Ethan retrieved his phone, I slid the top of my dress back down. Still kneeling, Ethan snapped a picture of us and that damn cucumber. Ethan then showed me the picture. I looked exhausted, embarrassed, and angry all in one. Madam Vivian hands me the towel, soap, and washcloth. Over in the far corner is a room where you can freshen up. Madam Vivian looks at Ethan. Mr. Bowman, one piece of advice. Remember, this game is about pleasing selflessly, not selfishly. Your desires are your desires, and her desires are her desires. This game will help keep the two separate. So long as you keep that in mind... You should be fine. I stood up and with my weakened legs, I slowly walked over to the room. There was a sink where I could wash up. I looked at myself in the mirror and thought, what a wild night. I just want to get out of here and go home. There's a light knock at the door. Just a second, Ethan, I said. I quickly clean up readjust myself and crack the door open. It was Madam Vivian. Miss Jamerson, may I? She said while pointing her index finger inside the room, requesting entry. My eyes looked left to right, surveying the demonstration room, looking for Ethan. Mr. Bowman has departed the demonstration room. May I come in for a minute? I fully open the door. Madam Vivian walks in. So, this is your first time at one of these events? Yes, I actually thought it was a regular charity event, 
but this has turned out to be something way more. I understand. Let me guess. Although Mr. Bowman is the president of the Red Chapter, he hadn't told you about the type of membership club this is. No, he didn't. Not even a hint. Madam Vivian sighs and says, I guess old habits are hard to break. What do you mean? I've known Mr. Bowman for quite some time. In fact, I've known his family for quite some time. You are not the first pretty woman I've seen on Mr. Bowman's arm, but there's something about you that stands out differently from the others. And what is that? Your innocence, Miss Jamerson. Although you've just met me, there's more to my story. Like what? I'm a well-known and well-respected counselor for this membership club. There are several of us, and I happen to be the one who is signed to the Red Chapter. I've been working with, well, helping Mr. Bowman overcome a few of his challenges. I say all of this because I want to give you this. Madam Vivian hands me a business card. This has my direct phone numbers to my office and personal cell. Should you ever feel the need to call and just talk things out, do enjoy yourself with Mr. Bowman. He's a charmer and with the right tweaks, he can be a keeper. Just know that tonight you've made a trusted friend and confidant. Madam Vivian said with a warm smile, I really couldn't fully understand everything she just told me, but I trusted my gut instinct. Tonight, I had started to see a different side of Ethan, and I had a feeling that things would only intensify as we continued our relationship. Holding the business card slightly into the air, I said, Thank you for sharing this with me. I placed the card safely into my purse. You're welcome, Miss Jamerson. And you did well tonight. Madam Vivian exited the room and I followed after her. I did well. I sure as hell don't feel like I did well. I feel like a half-drunk woman wearing a mini dress at a freak show who just got painfully fucked by a cucumber from a rich maniac. Yep, that pretty much sums up how I feel right now. I loosely wave my hand goodbye to Madam Vivian as I depart the demonstration room. As I walk out, I spot Ethan and Dominic in a corner talking. I walk over and interrupt. Take me home now. Ethan and Dominic both turn and look at me at the same time. Dominic lifts up one of his eyebrows, surprised at the seriousness in my tone. But there's a lot more stations, Ethan started to say. I stop him mid-sentence. Now, right the fuck now. I said as my eyes begin to water. Damn, I hate when I get so angry that my emotions start to pour out. Ethan, we can catch up and finish this conversation another time. I'm here for the rest of the night in case one of the members have questions or inquiries. Kiva, it was a pleasure meeting you. I hope to see you again soon. Dominic said as he reached for my hand and brushed his thumb back and forth on top of it. This ends chapter 6, part 1. Tune in next week for chapter 6, part 2 to find out what happens next. The games have begun, but can Kiva stay as a key player in this twisted tug of war of control? Will Ethan come off his throne of selfishness? Who is the man with two sides? You don't want to miss what's next. 
Here's a question for you. Do you prefer to be the more controlling in a relationship or do you like for your partner to lead most of the time? I will be releasing an unscripted video for chapter 6 part 1 in the next few days. This is going to be so juicy. Yours truly, Miss Anonymous.